this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Started with animation. Hi folks, Maya is currently rendering a scene which I created with quite a rich texture. It has only three lights and a camera which rotates about this geometry here. I'll show you more about it later. And uh, the richness of the texture comes from what is called AXF. And when you go to Maya and apply a new shader, new material to any object, the second entry from the top is called AI AXF Shader. Now, what is an AXF Shader? It leads us to X-Rite and Pantone, and it's called appearance exchange format AXF, the digital twin of a physical material. Here you see physical materials, probably they look like photographs of real materials, like a real nicely textured and woven structure here, but they're all digital. And the problem is that you see things in the real world and you create things in the real world and to move them into the digital world with the digital lighting is not trivial at all. That's why this company, x uh, produces and ships um, products where you can evaluate these textures under different light settings. Uh, just follow this link here and you'll see more about it. For example, these pair of shoes, they're the same shoes, basically, uh, but under different lighting conditions. This is much more in the shadow, of course. It's the same material. So um, this is uh, really complex here. And um, when you go down here, you see try AXF and you can download sample files. They're quite big. And uh, the hound's tooth, for example, or the red and uh, green, actually it's red and blue played is um, very interesting textures or the quartz stone uh, which is a totally different thing from the gar garment and clothing section here anyway this company and others as well produce products in order to transfer these real life materials into the digital world and the AXF shader in Arnold does import them now, x I'm not affiliated with them in any way, and they're a big company anyway. They don't need support, but they um, offer a, f a free AXF viewer here, like this one. And this, for example, is the x Right Basketball 01, which is a free texture which you can apply and download and um, play with. And here you already see, well, let's go back here, um, it's a nice and rich texture with some glossiness here, which you see here. But when you go to the back here, it looks as if it has no um, texture at all, like a pure orange. But when you move the object a little bit further, then the structure reappears. So when you have this object in, re in the real world, how do you create it? A texture, a neutral texture, which you can use in the digital world. Then, uh, this is, as I said, not trivial at all. So here you can try these things out. Just double click and apply them. Some take longer, others don't, and you just can um, have a look under different lighting conditions here. One of my favorites actually is this one, the hound's tooth. And it almost looks as if the resolution was infinite, which would point to a procedural texture, which is not um, the case here. It's not a procedural texture. It's based on images, actually, on 
neutral, neutrally scanned images. So let's close this and go to Maya. Quite a complex object, easily created. And the camera rotates around him sitting on this cylinder. He has an odd head and uh, the typical thing would have been maybe making him walk through the scene but it just uh, fancied doing something more abstract and um, uh, this object here is uh, a boolean operation between a horse and a cow it doesn't look like that and uh, I just merged it with the head of this person here nothing special and you don't see that texture here you can't actually visualize it here until you actually render it and when I render this view in Arnold here I get this impression here and uh, when you go closer and render it again I see the structure of the of the material here I don't want to want to render this here and this is uh, one of the materials I've shown you before, I think, in the AXF viewer here. And this is a material from the AXF as well. So uh, it's a really interesting way to texture things. And all the way to the right in the attribute editor, I find my AXF shader. And uh, it has only three entries, really. You can't do anything more with it. The file name the path for the texture so basically that's the same that's the directory and that's where the file is in and the uv scale and that's an important one it's set to 300 in this case and uh, i just show you how this works so first of all you need to set the texture path and uh, in my case the texture path is here and here you see uh, lots of files really all free to download in this folder I see lots of AXF files, all of them downloaded for free. But I also have EXR files and they are automatically created once you apply one of these AXF shaders to your geometry. So we don't need to care about these here or the JPEGs which just give us a you know, all the way down here when I, because I sorted it by type. and. Um, the these are just visualizations of that material so the crucial thing here is that we tell Maya where the folder is where we find our uh, material so add the file name now that's uh, right here it's the same folder but it shows us only the AXF files and if I for example choose the fine green brown leather the leather is being applied to my geometry here it's, it's pretty quick actually and now I show you the default I think one and when you use that default it uh, I think it's uh, it applies to meters and we are in a world of centimeters now uh, you don't see that texture really whereas when you go to a very high value like 600 you see that texture evolve here, right here, for example. Maybe 200. And now you see how it develops here. So you have to play with the UV scale here in order to get it right for your file, for your scene. For the floor, for example, I used the metallic snake. I don't know why it's called metallic snake, but when I render it, I see that it's uh, kind of properly applied to that floor. Uh, this is 1000 now. If I change this to 100, I get these textures and then uh, the image looks very blurred already, so it's not meant to be scaled up like this. When I set it to 1, you don't see a texture at all. When you set it to 500, it starts to work fine.
So what you basically do is you go to this website here. It's um, xride.com slash AXF, easy to remember really, and download these samples here. And uh, then you put them into your source images folder in your current Maya project and uh, apply them as a material to the geometry you created. If you take a look at the hypergraph, here I have lots of um, AXF shaders. For example, if I graph that network, it doesn't show as much. That's all there is. So you cannot really manipulate these things. What you can do, though, is navigate to your source images and AXF folder and look for diffuse files. And you'll find them there. And this is, for example, the diffuse file of the gray-black houndstooth texture. And uh, it's very dark, which is natural for diffuse objects here is only the diffuse channel of this material it's not the real color and uh, what I did is I changed the colors a little bit I made this green more green and I painted or selected this uh, part here and tinted it blue so that's the difference here of course when you do this and override the previous diffuse material everything will change here so be careful maybe you give it another name uh, rename it differently so you can always uh, go back to the previous original version. Wish you a very nice day and bye bye. Thank you.